What's up guys and welcome back to Planet 2. Today we are going to be adding in some new animals to our oasis here and uh, we've got some heavy hitters today. I feel like we've had uh, had some pretty big animals, like literally physically big animals lately. And uh, today we've got some rhinoceros. So uh, it's going to be pretty exciting. I can't wait to see what happens. We're going to make them a nice little enclosure. And uh, we'll see if we can make them happy. Now, I do want to go, and before we get into that, I do want to check on our, our recent additions here. I want to see how everybody's doing. We've got our gorillas over here, who this guy's just kind of hanging out, eating his breakfast and stuff. And uh, you guys can see, nutrition's not great. Can we upgrade their food yet? They're currently on a food quality two. So, I mean, not bad. I'd like to get it to food quality three so we can get that, that meal quality up. To 100% but uh, overall they're looking pretty good let me check on our giraffes over here over in our Africa exhibit honestly the giraffes I feel like are going to be a big key to our zoo we spent so much of our conservation credit balance on these guys like you guys can see we've only got 4200 left so we really need these guys to be happy we want them to uh to start you know kind of pumping out some babies and stuff looks like we're at 82% welfare can we get any any food enrichment? I would imagine we would have some food enrichment here. So we're going to go into habitat, enrichment items, food enrichment. Um, no, we don't have any food enrichment unlocked from research yet. So that, that makes sense. That's why it's so bad. So uh, we're just going to have to give it a little bit of time, which is fine. I'm going to go ahead and speed time up a little bit. We're going to get it to, uh, to full daylight. And we are going to work on our Indian rhinoceros exhibit. So uh, obviously... Being from India, we are going to put them over here. Oh, we've got overcrowding with the grizzly bears. We must have had some babies that grew up into adults, which is kind of exciting. We've got we've got quite a few of these guys in here. So this is, this is mom and dad right here, 14 years old each. And these three are the ones that have, uh, have grown up. So we're going to go ahead and send these guys to the trade center. And then we're going to check them out and see which ones we want to keep and which ones we may want to throw away. Throw away is uh, kind of an aggressive term. I'm sorry about that. More like trade away to another zoo where they can be happy for the rest of their lives. Um, Tempest is one that we already had in here. We were saving for a future generation of Grizzly Bear when we were ready for it. And uh, check this out. Hemison here is actually really, really solid. He's got some great genes. And if we go into uh, to compare mates, let's see. It's not going to be inbreeding, which is great. And uh, it looks like we've got some pretty good potential for uh, for genes. You know, definitely size and longevity are going to be up there. Immunity and fertility are a little bit uh, more varied, but um, cool. Okay, so we're we're going to keep uh, we're going to keep Hemison, and then we're going to get rid of the other two. So in Berlin, I'm sorry, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I mean. I'm down to just release you into the wild. Whatever. Let's let's put it back in the wild. Go on. I'm going to say you can go on out of here, bro. We don't need you either. Okay, so that's actually perfect. So, I mean, it, it's not going to be for a while because they're only 15 years old. But when these two, and we'll, we'll let it play so they stop fighting here. I don't want anybody getting hurt. When they're, you know, kind of at the end of their life and, and we need to rehome them and that sort of thing. Now we've got two grizzlies that we can just instantly put back in. We don't have to buy any or use any conservation credits or anything like that so uh that's that's pretty exciting looks like we've got a power source failing we can get a mechanic over there high amounts of litter we'll take care of that in a future episode when we're kind of doing the the you know random things around the zoo trying to fix things up but anyway yeah so uh this is going to be kind of our india asia side of the map and they want a thousand square meters with 37 square meters of water and uh, they need a grade four fence, no specific height on it. Okay, you know, not not too bad, dude. Those guys, wow, they are in a very specific part of the world. You know what I mean? And they're not even really that endangered. They're vulnerable, so obviously they're not in, in a great spot. But um, you know, it's 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 cool to to see that they're doing pretty well. So uh, okay, thousand square meters of land. We also want a little bit of water for them to be able to cool off. This should be interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna get to work on a. An enclosure right here bring it around this way a little bit I mean it doesn't have to be massive but I, I feel like we could kind of make a pretty cool uh pretty cool enclosure for them so I, I may end up making it a little bit bigger than they need bada bing bada boom there it is all right so that is uh I mean it's honestly it's not bad I, how, how big is it we're gonna need to throw a a habitat gate on there where I guess I mean this the staff area is right here so we could just kind of have it go like that is gonna look pretty good 
Uh, let's see, let's see the size on this bad boy here. So we need a thousand square meters of land plus the water, so like a thousand forty. This is five thousand right here. I, I mean, it is a, it's a little bit big, but I also, I like giving them extra space, so I think I'm gonna leave it big. I say we make this side up here where they're gonna like eat and sleep and stuff like that is gonna kind of be the, the taller side of it, and then we're gonna kind of bring it down as we go down towards the water. So let's, uh, let's grab our terrain tool here. And we're just gonna kind of push a little bit. Nothing, nothing too crazy, nothing too scary. But I'm gonna say, let's bring it down at least to that point. And let's, let me see if I flatten all this out. Just a little bit of verticality there. And then we could honestly, let's make the water even lower. I'm gonna push it down to that. And we'll just put the, the water over here in this corner. And we'll just kind of give them like a slight, slight beachy access. And don't, don't worry, we will. We will clean a lot of this up going forward, but uh, we'll, we'll put like rock barriers and stuff. But yeah, so now we could put we could put the water over here and kind of give them a sloping way down. So that's that's gonna be their water there. I realize the water is probably a little bit overkill. They probably won't ever actually use that much water, but uh, I mean we we can work with it. Actually, how much? Let's let's check how much water they have. Fifteen hundred square meters of water. They wanted forty, but hey. We do things big around here. They're gonna have a nice little beach area once we set up some, some you know, sand and plants and everything else. So I like that. Kinda like that we've got some varying levels to this so far. It's, it's looking pretty good and they've got a good space for like I said, their living area. We could put some of their toys and stuff out here. And this might actually end up looking pretty good. So let's, let's start making this look a little bit nicer. Let me go in, we're gonna go back to our Zoopedia, take a look. So they like grassland and temperate from Asia. I'm gonna grab some temperate rocks here and we're gonna kinda, kinda just set them up with, with a little bit nicer decor around their uh, their water area. This is low key the most relaxing thing in the world. Like I, I totally could make a blueprint and just kind of like save some, uh, save some what's it called? Some, some examples with these rocks and just kind of like recreate the same ones over and over and over. But I, I kind of like just randomly placing rocks down and trying to trying to find things that that look good together. You know, just grabbing some of these, throwing them in, and just kind of making it look unique. So that's what we're doing here. Honestly, we could we could even grab a few and kind of kind of set up a, a ledge for over here. So we can we can have kind of like a natural barrier here just to kind of cut off the, the different sections, which looks pretty nice. And then if we could kind of just smooth, I mean, that part's, I guess that's pretty smooth right there. That's not bad. But then like we could come in and I don't really know what kind of terrain they want yet, but we can just kind of do a little bit to start. We could do some grass up on this area. So this is kind of like their grassy living space. Then down here in their beachy area, obviously it's gonna be a, a bit more sand. And then because there's not kind of a cutoff over here, this would be a little bit more mixed. So we'll bring down our intensity and we can kind of mix it in a little bit and have more of like a natural fade. But something like that is, uh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, this is this is starting to look nice. And we haven't even added any like plants or anything else so this this is looking good temperate and grassland in asia this is this is what we're working with here all right interesting what do we want to do i mean i'm seeing lots of like bamboo and stuff bamboo is always fun so we can throw throw some bamboo down in some of the corners and just kind of give it a a bit of color a wee bit of color kind of like it back here in this corner Obviously don't want to block people's view of these guys from up top, but definitely want want a decent amount of color. Looks like we can have baobab trees. I do feel like a baobab tree is kind of nice. So we could set up a little a little baobab over here. And then we could do some of the uh the the twin flower or whatever it's called. What's the really pretty stuff? Yeah, twin flower. We could throw some of these over here around the tree. You guys know it's not a, a T. Martin enclosure unless it's got flowers around the tree. So we're just gonna go ahead and do it like this. I feel like that that looks that looks pretty nice right there. All right, what else do we want? I mean, obviously we could have like lily pads and stuff. Do we have lilies? We've got bracken. Oh, water lilies. Ooh, this is see this is gonna look nice. It's gonna add a little bit of color to it too. So we can go ahead and we'll, we'll throw a little bit in there. Maybe a, 
small smidge over here, maybe a little, little one over there like that. Maybe kind of a bigger one over here. Make sure they're looking good. All right, we could even, honestly, we could throw, here, let's take off Asia. Let's go to our temperate rocks. Let's get a couple of temperate rocks kind of like dotting the, the water. Nothing too big, but stuff that just kind of like sticks out of the water a little bit maybe. Yeah, that might that might look nice if we get a couple, a couple decent ones. They don't even have to be coming out of the water. They can just be laid in the water, just as as something, something to to add to it. You know what I mean? So it's not just plain boring water. So that looks pretty good there. Do we have any like reeds or anything? There are blackthorn bushes, which are kind of nice. I feel like we could add we could add some of these underneath the bamboo, maybe, kind of make a big lush, lush area over there. We could maybe add. You know, a couple, I don't know. I don't really know where we're gonna play stuff yet, so I don't wanna get too crazy. We do have reeds, so we're definitely gonna want some reeds. Definitely thinking over here in this corner. Make this fairly lush. We could even have, I mean, we have like a smaller set of reeds. We could kind of put some in here next to the rocks. Maybe another set over here. Something like that looks pretty nice. Maybe put another one next to it, boom, all right. Not looking too bad there. We've got uh, we've got some other trees. We've got cypress trees. I mean, ele ooh, elephant grass. <laughs> can't can't go wrong with that. We've got ivy and stuff. All right, I, I think we're good for now. Let's bring them in uh, and, and kind of start working on the other stuff first. I guess we could. I did. I went. I looked at the blueprints on Steam, and I think there was a really cool house. This rhino house right here is pretty sick, and it comes with a prefabbed water treatment facility which is kind of cool although i don't know that it's needed and i'm also worried this might be a little bit too big but i guess oh shoot yeah this this thing is is slightly massive i guess we're, we're gonna call it audible we're not gonna put it where we were thinking if we put it back there how's that looking all right not too bad except it's way it's way above the grounds okay so we're we're gonna want to want to fix that it's looking pretty good all right i like it i really i don't i don't think it's got a generator and another thing back here. Let me let me check what we're working with. Power and water. Nah, we aren't we aren't gonna need it, fam. I guess we can leave them on there for now, but they aren't even like they aren't even really connected to anything. The whole back side of this is kind of a waste, so I'm I'm gonna delete this back side. Good work to whoever made it. Seriously, cool, smart. I enjoy it, but uh, it's taking up too much space for us. Thinking about how long it's taking me to just come through and delete all of these individual items. I'm just deleting. Think about the person that made this. Seriously, I feel kind of bad to delete this because it, it does look really nice. I'm not going to lie. And it, it could have served a, a good purpose. I wish I would have known that before we kind of set everything else up because we probably could have built the, the enclosure around the idea that we were going to use this. But... Um, it's okay. So that's that's good there. And now that got us a little bit of extra space. We could actually move this further back along here. And uh, boom. All right. Looking good to me. I'm thinking maybe, uh, maybe get some more of these guys in here. Kind of make it a, a bit... A bit more homey, a bit more exciting. Something like that looks pretty good. And then we could even, we can just delete that door because nobody's actually going to be using that. All right. So there we go. Our little rhino house. Even has it labeled for us. H-O-U-S. Can I can I edit that? Bam. Your boy's a magician. Good stuff. All right. So uh, this is actually looking pretty good. I like this a lot. I like it next to the baobab tree because you can see like all the wood in there is kind of the same color as the, the trunk of the tree. This is pretty cool so far. So we've got all that. Let me go into our habitat. And obviously we don't have any research done on these guys, but we can... Just kind of take a look at the basics. Looks like they actually, they they like a lot of the stuff that like the giraffes and the elephants and some of these other guys like. So let's, I mean, let's start off with food and water. The most basic necessities. We're going to go with a big food trough. We can kind of put it right here so people can see him eating and it's closed for our, our uh, keepers to be able to refill it. Water pipe is going to go right next to it because you want some water with your food looks good. Now let's take a look at some enrichment items. So this is going to be a big toy. We could throw this over here in this corner. We've got a hanging barrel feeder. I feel like it might be kind of neat for people to... I don't know. What do you guys think? I guess we could put it over here as kind of a kind of a fun spot for it. So we've got that. 
We've got a plant screen, which we could put over here. Kind of encourage them to get close to the onlookers. Um, we've got a large rolling barrel feeder, which we could put over here. We've got a rubbing pillar, which I'm gonna put right on this corner. We've got a Skittle. I mean, I feel like we're just kind of throwing random things in here, but I want them to be happy when they first get in here. So we're gonna throw the Skittle down there, and then I guess we could do a little sprinkler over in this corner since we have nothing back there. And bada bing, bada boom, that is actually a pretty good looking, uh, pretty good looking setup here. Obviously, there's some some T's that we can cross and some I's that we can dot, but. Let's get these guys in here and see what they think off the bat. I just realized, I don't think I, I showed you guys who we were able to find on the market. So, uh, kind of a rare thing. They're not really that expensive. It's just there aren't that many of them on the market, which is kind of interesting because that means they should probably be pretty expensive, but they weren't bad. Uh, Samesh is gonna be our male here. He's actually super solid. I was kind of sad about the size. Obviously, when you think about rhinos, you, you want the biggest possible, but there's nothing we could do. He was he was the only decent male that we could find, especially for uh, breeding purposes. So we have some mesh that we're moving in. And then if we look at our female, Vai Vaishnavi. Okay, this, this is the bad one. So the females, actually, now that I think about it, they were expensive. There was one decent female on the market for 10,000 conservation credits, and I was just not gonna spend that. So I chose the one that had good fertility and nothing else good. I don't know, man. Like, I, it's not like we're really getting these guys specifically for breeding purposes. It's not like our lions or our tigers or anything else. So uh, I, I think we're going to be okay. Um, offspring isn't going to be great, but at least we're going to have some offspring. And these guys should bring in quite a bit of hype with, uh, with our guests. So we're going to bring these guys in. I'll let you guys know when we see them. Actually, you know what? We we weren't ever gonna see them because we haven't added this to a work zone. So we're gonna go into our work zones here and we are gonna look, I think the Asia work zone is gonna be the one to go for, yeah. So technically it's Asia and India, but there we go. We've added it to the work zone and now we should have a new keeper and we should have some new rhinos. Right on time, baby, here we go. The first one is coming in. Oh man, this is kind of exciting. Let's see how big he is. All right, not too bad. This is our male, right? Yep, this is some mesh right here. He's actually got a, a, a gold rating. I wish we could have got him a better female, but honestly, there just weren't any options. Let's see his female. The thing is, is he's, I mean, he's small for a, um, for a male. That, the female is really small. My goodness, that, that's gonna be some painful reproduction right there. I, what in the world? Is she small for a female? Let me check her genetics. She's 33% size, he's 58, okay. So he's about average for a male, and she is small for a female. But it's it's all right, I mean, we, we can, let's just, let's let's do a little peek real quick. Let's just see, let's see what's on the list here. Are you kidding me? 18.2 years old though, so she's kind of a, she's kind of a little bit older, but they live to be 39. Shoot, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. We're gonna get Prisha here, Prisha, Get in here, old girl. You're 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 going straight to the wild. Boom. <laughs> see ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. All right. Let's let's see what we have going on here. So terrain is not good. I didn't really anticipate it was going to be. We want some more long grass. We want rock, and we don't like sand. Interesting. All right. So I guess our our beach area is gonna be all rock. Is just how it's gonna have to be, and then we might add some some long grass in there as well. So let's let's get some some smooth rock, and we're we're just gonna go to town over here to start things off. Kind of fade the rock into our grass over here. Bada bing, bada boom, looks good. Sand is under control. We've got a little bit too much rock now, so we could add some soil, and we definitely want a little bit of long grass as well. So I guess you know what, soil probably makes more sense than rock for under here. So let's. Let's go ahead and do all soil in our, our ponds. And honestly, a little a little bit of rock looks nice. Hold on, I'm gonna go light intensity rock and just kind of add add a little bit of rock into the soil. That looks, that looks pretty good there. Okay, so we've got that. Let's get some light soil to kind of fade out of the water. Just kind of make it look a little bit nicer. It's all about the mix, man. You gotta have a nice mix. So that looks pretty good. Maybe a little little bit of soil up here, just so it's not all the same thing. You know, our sprinkler area, they can kind of get a little wet and muddy. All right, nice. So the soil looks good. Now we want a little bit of long grass. I mean, I guess we could kind of 
throw throw some in here. They want quite a bit of long grass. Like this is gonna be a mix of rock and long grass, I guess. To be honest, I didn't think they were gonna like grass this much, but we'll I mean we'll take it. It looks nice. I think the long grass honestly looks even better than the short grass does because it's a little bit lighter of a color. All right. So, that's what we've got. We've got kind of a little beachy, rocky area, and the rest is pretty much all grass. Looking pretty good there. Let's see what else this guy likes. Looks like we kind of hit the nail on the head, dude. The habitat's really good. I mean, he, he's happy. Meal quality needs to be better. Speaking of which, we're going to have to get some research on these guys. But it, it seems like he's pretty happy. Are you content, buddy? You're happy with what we made you? I mean, this, this was kind of a... Kind of a, a good a good product out of us, you know what I mean? Like we didn't really have to try that hard. We didn't have to rely on his his instincts that much. I feel like we did a really good job just by ourselves, which is is kind of cool. He's got some very just a, a weird looking nose. Very interesting facial features. Uh, he's he's cute though. I like those little ears. He just looks like a tank, dude. Like he's he's a hundred percent ready for war. All right, so let me see. Before the the girl gets in here, let me see from a an environment standpoint. Coverage is at seven percent, so we we could do a little more coverage. We could do like a second baobab tree. I'm kind of thinking maybe a tree over in this corner, even if it was something like this. I don't know. I'm gonna move the sprinkler here, and I think I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna do something like this. Yeah, I like that. So let's add a little tree there, and then, ooh, I actually, I know what we could do. I'm gonna grab some of this twin flower, and we'll we'll run it along along the side of their their little house here. You can kind of run it along both sides as well. Looking pretty good here. Yeah, this is gonna add just that wee bit more of color that I think we need. And uh, I don't know, this is a relatively simple one. You know, obviously rhinos, you don't really have like trees they need to climb or anything like that. Um, I don't think they really swim all that much either. So they're, they're, they're simple, simple animals. But I, I mean, I, I just feel like it's kind of pretty naturally beautiful. And I feel like the size turned out pretty well too. I was worried that it might be a little bit too big, but um, I, I, I think it's gonna be on point. Looks like we had some Gila monsters that uh, ended up becoming adults, so we're gonna have to get rid of them. Let's check out maturity here. Looks like our adults are are still still pretty old, so we're just gonna take all these guys and uh, we can just send them to the trade center. We're gonna sell them off, make a little bit of money. I mean, makes me sad, but these guys, they just, they, they produce so much. Ooh, we're getting some golds in here, dude. I might leave, I'm gonna leave one one gold male and female. We'll trade the others for now. We might we might save those other ones and use them later. But um, yeah, I mean overall things are things are looking pretty good. Looks like they're hungry. We can call a keeper over there. Why is the exhibit so bad? The cleanliness is bad. Yeah, keeper, get on over there. We uh, we need you there. Looks like we've got some West African lions that are about to mature. Oh, our little our little uh, albino cubs are gonna mature. Dude, this is pretty exciting. New animal has arrived at the zoo. This is our uh, our new girl. Uh-huh. Oh, she is running around. She is enjoying herself. We've got an African buffalo about to die of old age. That's a little sad. Oh, yep, there she goes. All right, we'll, we'll call a vet for that. I'm not too worried about that, though. We're, we're going to make an African exhibit, and we're going to get new African buffalo. But, um, all right. Oh, shoot, the, the lions have matured. I want to look at our, our new rhinos, but... We've got a lot happening here. So these lions, dad is beating up on uh, on the newly, uh, you know, kind of joining adulthood lion here. So Mandala, you're gonna go to the, the storage center here. Let's see, 1.5 years, 1.5 years. Okay, we're good. I guess we just had one baby that was gonna mature, not not all three, so. Um, cool, not bad. Let's, let's go back to our rhinos over here. Prisha. How you doing, girl? You're looking pretty good. You've got way better stats, way better health. Everything is better about you compared to our old one. I'm sorry I doubted you. I'm sorry I tried to to pick anybody but you. You are uh, you're a boss, and it looks like you're you're pretty good. A little bit hot. We could probably add some coolers into the habitat. Oh shoot, we've got hippo problems too. Oh, that's that's a good angle that I really enjoy. How is he doing for for heat? Yeah, looks like looks like we might need. 
We're gonna need some some coolers for these guys. Check on their Zupedia. Ideal temperature is up into the 40s. It's currently they're they're gonna be fine, dude. I'm I'm not too worried about it. It's the middle of the day. It's it's two o'clock. I. I, I think they'll be okay. We'll keep an eye on it, but most of our animals only like being up to 40, and it's usually 44 during the day in our zoos. So, uh, you know, just just got to live with it. Check on our hippos here and see what's going wrong. I've got a feeling somebody recently matured. So it looks like two of our females, unfortunately, are elderly, and they're not going to be having children anymore. So we're going to go ahead and rehome them. It's going to cost us $360, but that's fine. We've got an adult male here, a bunch of females, and it looks like this guy right here is the one causing the issue. So I'm going to go ahead and send him to our trade center, and we'll see we'll see how he's looking and what we want to do with him. So Nabalong is a female that we're currently planning on keeping. Let's see what his stats were. If his stats are good, we could potentially keep... Oh, wait, shoot. We need to hit play. It's going to have to refresh here. His stats are, you know, not bad, but not great. I I, I think I think we're going to go for a trade here. I, th I think we can expect better. So let's go ahead and trade him off. Let's check that, that albino lion that we had born and see what we want to do with him. Mandala here. So we currently have Mahina, who is better overall. And then we've also got this female who's really good. Are we going to be able to mate these two, Mahina and Bayo? Let's check that. Mahina and Bayo are going to be inbreeding. I'm pretty sure it's going to be inbreeding with Mandala as well because they're coming from the same original parents. So, um, you know, it, it's kind of hard to give up a, a an albino lion, but I, I think the right call is to uh, to trade him away. So we'll I, I'm gonna I'm gonna increase the price a bit. We're we're gonna go fish and see if we could catch ourselves a, a sucker who wants to pay extra. Honestly, we should we could we could probably do more than that. I'm gonna put him up on the market for like thirty five hundred. We'll see what happens with that. But um, anyway, there you guys have it. All right, so the zoo is in good hands. Actually, hold on. Um, I think everybody should be good. Multiple animals on low. Well, shoot. It's always our exhibit animals. It's so frustrating. Let's check on our puff adders. We're gonna look at maturity and it looks like a bunch of them just matured. So let's let's leave, you know, a few males and a few females and then we're gonna take all these that just matured. We're gonna go ahead and send them to the trade center and we are going to, uh, to sell them for a profit. So let's just grab all these puff adders. I guess we can leave, let's leave one gold kind of like we did for the Gila monsters. Quick trade these guys out of here and that should take care of that issue. So, uh, as I was saying, there you guys have it. Actually turned out to be a, uh, a pretty nice episode. I, I really I really enjoyed this. I, I, I like these guys. I think they're cute. I hope they uh, they make some nice babies for us. And I just, I, I feel like it's a very clean, very beautiful exhibit here. So I'm happy with how it turned out. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm gonna see you guys in our next one. Drop a like, let me know which animal you wanna see next down in the comments, and uh, I'll catch you all later. Peace out.